Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and we have yet another exciting episode for you today. Before we move into the meat and potatoes of the topic, I'd like to give you the quick fist watch check, and here it is. It is a Rolex Submariner Sea Dweller, 43 millimeters, 50th anniversary. By the way, please subscribe to my channel. I'd like to see my numbers trickle up. That way I know you're coming along on this journey with me. If you've been a long time subscriber, I would like to sincerely thank you for being with me all this time. This is my beautiful sea dweller. I got it from Rocky and Brian over at James and Sons in Orland Park, a Rolex authorized distributor. Guys, it's hard to get an AD to take you seriously, but these are some nice folks. And if you call and mention my name, I can't promise you anything, but I know they'll take you seriously and be very courteous. Okay, now into the topic at hand. Guys, I probably I'm a lot like you, which is to say, uh, hey, you know what? I like the Golden Corral Buffet. Do you like a buffet? Let me tell you why I like the buffet. Not that it's particularly good food, but the thing about the buffet is, is that you can sample a little bit of everything, okay? Now, if you're not in the United States of America, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Unless you're in Sweden, you people invented the smorgasbord. But uh, you know, we Americans, look, we like to eat. And uh, look, I'm gonna tell you what, right now, I like good food if I can get it, but yeah, mediocre food will do. But more than anything else, I think I like the variety pack. So how does that relate to watch collecting? Well, you know, you get seduced into all kinds of brands. If you like Rolex, before you know it, you've got yourself a Tudor Black Bay. And then um, after that, you're gonna have yourself a Seiko Turtle. And then who can stop with just a Seiko Turtle then? Maybe you have a, and wind up with a Grand Seiko, an Omega. You know, I have all these watches. I have done all these things. And uh, I've had to flip out of a lot of things that I bought that I thought I would love and just didn't. Should have loved them. I mean, they were horologically significant. Look at the Zenith El Primero in 42 millimeters of tricolor gloriousness. I'll drop a picture of that watch that I had right here. Flipped it. Awesome watch. Never was gonna wear it, so I flipped it. Um, as you know, I really like my 42 millimeter Omega uh, SMP 300. I'm gonna drop a picture of this thing in right here. But uh, I think I'm gonna sell it. So if you're interested in a tremendous family deal on that watch, well, you know, drop me a line at markgoldberg8 at gmail.com because you can't keep everything. Or at least I can't keep everything. I don't have quite enough money to keep everything. See all those trees out there? They need trimming. See that siding? It's gonna need replacing in about a year or so. So, you know, I just can't keep them all. But that brings me to the topic of this video, which is, one, once again, Rolex. Now, here's the thing. Here's, there are several things that I really love about Rolex. Number one, legibility. You know, I don't have the best eyes anymore, and uh, these watches, by and large, are very legible. It's, it's, it's hard to find a Rolex that is difficult to read. Mm. Unless, you, unless you get into the sad story of the Rolex Daytona with the white face. I had one. I found it difficult to read with these aging eyes of mine, and I flipped it at a small loss. Who loses money on a Rolex, let alone a Daytona? Ah, you know, I'm afraid to sell. I'm afraid to sell anything in the way of in the way of Rolex now because uh, that was a huge mistake. But let me tell you what: you can live in a Rolex. I mean, you can collect Patek Philippe, but if you buy a Patek Philippe, you will have to carry it around like a baby sparrow so that it does not get crushed. You should be wearing a tie. You should be wearing a suit. You should be wearing a Louis Vuitton shoes and uh, you should carry your Patek Philippe. You should wrap yourself in bubble wrap. I mean, how can you walk around in a Patek Philippe? These things are delicate. Look at the pontiff's rotor on his world time. Stuck. And he literally had it serviced at the Hong Kong Patek Philippe service center. What was that, like three or four months ago? So I'm just saying, although I admire the craftsmanship, the horology, the horological content, the worthiness of what is Patek Philippe, Vacheron et Constantin, Aldimar Piguet, even though these words are difficult for me to say and they hurt my mouth and I have to make funny, angry looking Gallic faces in order to say them. Actually, this face, I think you can see it on any uh, metro in uh, Paris. The, the Parisians, they are not listening. You people are from America, um, the UK, and, uh, and uh, Australia, so we can make fun of the French. Okay, if you're, if you're listening from France right now, I'm really sorry. But you know what I'm saying. These guys, these are delicate watches. Now, they may be highly horologically significant, but you got to be careful with them. But Rolex. Ah, Rolex. 
You can live in a Rolex. You can work in a Rolex almost regardless of what you do. I mean, if you are a lumberjack, you can work in a Rolex. If you are a used car salesman, salesman a Joe's, Honest Joe's you, you know, transmission shop, you can work in a, in, in a Rolex. If you're a dog trainer, you can work in a Rolex. I, I don't know, what, what can't you do in a Rolex? I think you could be a plumber in a Rolex. These things are waterproof, they are robust. Uh, they're not scratch proof, but you know what? They clean up really nice if you've got to take a Cape Cod cloth to them or if it's time for their five or ten year service, you know, they'll, they'll clean them up. Boy, I would sort of like to go to the next level with my Rolex collection and get a gold sub or a day date. I, I think those are just staggeringly beautiful watches, but 18 karat gold or a Sky Dweller. I have a two-tone Sky Dweller, but a gold one, wow. Mm. I mean, okay, I gotta be honest, that would hurt a little bit. I'd have to liquidate a few things, you know. I'd need you people to buy a few more copies of Let Dogs Be Dogs, the, my book, which is in bookstores and on Amazon. Um, but I'm afraid to buy a gold Rolex for the same reason that I'm afraid to buy any hoity-toity brand, um, because they're much more delicate. Now, Okay, so they are, they are Rolex, so they are waterproof and they have robust movements that are difficult to jar loose, shock. It's, it's pretty hard to stick a rotor on, on a Rolex, but the cases and the bracelets being made out of 18 karat gold, well, the pontiff likes to say it's like wearing a stick of chocolate or butter on your wrist, and I believe it. Because when I look at the little inky dinky micro fine scratches and little tiny gouges that I get on just a steel watch, I realize I'm kind of hard on my stuff. But at the same time, I want to work in my Rolex. I want to live in my Rolex. Now, if I'm doing something really extremely nasty, fine. That's what the G-Shock is for, okay? Or that's what the Seiko Turtle is for. But most of the time, I want to really be able to live life in a Rolex. I want to enjoy myself. Now, if Rolex is your brand, you know what I'm talking about. But Rolex. I want to live my life in a Rolex, don't you? I mean, I want to die in a Rolex, kids. Put the Rolex in the box with me. Okay. Well, I know. I know you. You're the one. <laughs> You're going to open that box, snatch that Rolex. Do it, son. Do it. Don't let them put me all the way down with the Rolex. But, you know, for the viewing, can I be, you know, for the viewing, can I be like this? <laughs> Just make sure the bezel is correct. But you know what I'm saying? Like, this is an heirloom that you will pass along to your kids, and uh, they're going to have to service it once or twice in their lifetime. Guys. Avoid the junk at the low, low end. You buy one or two, but uh, save up. I mean, if you buy 10 mid-level Seikos, 11, 12 mid-level Seikos, which is the, you know, we're guys, we're collectors. We like to collect stuff. When we were kids, you know, it was G.I. Joe's or rocks or slingshots, whatever it was. I mean, we are born and bred our gender to collect stuff. But if you're collecting this series of six, seven, eight, nine, hundred, ten, you know, twelve hundred dollar Seikos, then before you know it, you've got this box full of watches that are all 30 seconds fast or slow. You could have had a Rolex that you could live in. Rolex. That's another thing. I'm going to wind up on this with my new slogan that so many of you have been feeding. The fact of the matter is, is that Rolex is the watch that you can live in. You can work in it and you can play in it. Don't buy a Rolex, leave it in stickers, stick it in the box, put the thing in your drawer. Or worse yet, you know, put it in your safe and then never visit it. I maintain that you, sir, should be seeing your Rolex more than you are seeing your own natural-born biological children. Okay? It's just the fact of the matter. Because you're looking at your wrist more than you're looking at your kids. Don't put a Rolex away in the safe. Don't baby a Rolex. Live in your Rolex. Work in your Rolex. Make love in your Rolex. Like, Rolex. Life in a Rolex is better. Remember. Okay, here it comes. Ready? Brrr feel the steel. Goldberg, peace out. Mm -hmm.